everybody. Welcome in Richard Cansino. Hey, everybody. How you doing? So, um, I guess I'll start off. Who is your favorite character that you played? Hmm. Well, I guess Kenshin. I'm I'm more familiar with him. There was also this <clears throat> character I really liked called Oh God, what was he? He was a vampire hunter. Um, and um, it, it it was really in, an interesting. It was very short little series, but I I liked it because they let me. It was kind of a film noir kind of approach. It was very dark and. And I got to pretend I was Humphrey Bogart for, for a while, which is, he's my favorite movie star, him and Cary Grant. So uh, uh, I got to pretend to be Humphrey Bogart. But I guess Kenshin was the most, uh, <clears throat> had the biggest range and, the mo and it also had the most, apparently the most effect on, on people. They seemed to really, really like him. So You probably already know who my favorite is. No, tell me, is it, is it, uh, no, tell me, because I forget the names. Legato. Oh, yeah, Legato. Why? You're, you're a sick puppy. He's an evil guy. I've always had a fascination for villains. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, my favorite character uh, out of Cowboy Bebop was Vicious. So. <laughs> well, you know, villains are more fun. You know, you take, you take uh, what, what would Casablanca be or, or what would Raiders of the Lost Ark be without the Nazis? You got to have villains and, and, and actors enjoy most actors enjoy playing villains more because they're more fun. They're more colorful. We get to do more. You know, the good guys just get to stand there pretty much and, and be heroic. And I think that's why I like Kenshin so much, because he's a good guy, but he used to be a bad guy. Yeah. So that bad guy comes out and then he and then he's goofy and I, I like comedy. I'm I'm kind of a goofy guy myself in real life. So yeah, yeah. Legato was kind of a he's kind of in inside kind of cool. He'd be a good James Bond villain, I think. Well, I think but, he's do. my second favorite anime villain of all time. So <laughs> oh. who's your first? Uh, a character from an anime series called Monster. His name's Johan Liebert. <laughs> okay. Okay. It, I've he, heard of Monster. I've heard of Monster. He's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> he's very similar to Johan, but honestly, Yo Johan would make Legato look like Mother Teresa. Oh, he's a bad guy then. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's terrible. Well, well, um, 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 Legato Blue Summer. He he kind of was into the psychological thing, wasn't he? He he was sort of like, I don't need to destroy you. You can destroy yourself. I'll Pretty you much. Destroy. And yeah. if you think if you think about it, he won against uh, the hero because he made the hero do what he didn't want him to do. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Evil triumphed in that one. Which my little 12 year old brain, when I watched it, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sort of like uh, there's a lot of um, villains like that. You know, I, I, nothing is coming to mind specifically, but I recall seeing some films, actual, you know, films where the, the, the bad guy is reaching into the inner recesses of the hero's mind and turning him in, into something. He, well, the Godfather, look at mm -hmm. the Godfather, Michael Corleone becomes everything he did not want to be. He becomes his father, which he didn't want to be. Or Scarface, which I think that was more of an accident. <laughs> well, yeah. An ax, an accident accident. Say hello, real friend. <laughs> uh, so, uh, anyway, yeah, that's. Uh, do you remember playing Vega in the Street Fighter movie? You know what? I looked it up 
and I still can't find my voice. All I can, all I can hear is a bunch of fighting and, and, uh, um, I don't, I don't, I think when I was doing street fighter and all of those, those things, not all of them, but there was a period in my life when I was literally going, I go in the morning, sometimes at eight in the morning, I, be recording for maybe three or four hours at one studio and then i'd go to another studio and then i go to another studio i would do three different shows sometimes three uh as many as three a day and and so it it became kind of a blur uh and i i you know you kind of look at the action and i know street fighter was a lot of fighting and yelling and and that kind of thing um maybe if i saw a clip and i was looking for a clip i couldn't find one that would refresh my my memory um, um i have i got the blu-ray set to it uh what do you call it uh, he's the he sneak i don't know if you remember recording the scene but he sneaks up on uh chun li while she's in the shower and he says i like to peel the skin off my rabbits Oh, man, now that is a great line. I would think I'd remember that. Are you sure that was me? Oh, yeah, it was you. Oh, man. <laughs> I like to, I'm going to use that on my girlfriend when she comes over tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Except she's a fifth degree black belt. <laughs> She'll well, I think Chun Lee kind of counts as one, so. Yeah. <laughs> Peel the skin off my rabbits. <laughs> That's Love a great that line. I wish I, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Well, there was yeah, also. They, it's, it's... Uh -oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I think you're we, losing signal. We're back. Okay, good. Uh, I think there was another uh, line with him where she kicks him in his face and. She, uh, it ruins his face. He goes, you scarred my beautiful face. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that one. My face, my beautiful face. Yeah. I think it's like my favorite Street Fighter character. <laughs> that one I remember. My face, my beautiful face. You ruined my face. Oh, now I kind of remember. He was a good looking guy, right? The... Yeah. yeah. He's uh... a... Yeah, yeah. He's like a narcissist or something. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like me in real life. And me too. Yeah, yeah. You know, because when I walk by a mirror, every time it cracks because, you know, my beauty is just so great for it. Yeah, I know. It's very frustrating because, you know, every time you look, you get better looking every time. It's just, it's, it's hard. It's difficult. Uh, do you have any memories of uh, working on uh, Tenchi Muo or series like that? You know, I don't, you know, I was doing, like I said, sometimes three different series in one day. And a lot of times, because the names, the titles of these series, they don't mean anything to me when I was doing them. You know, what does that mean? You know, I mean, some some of the titles meant something, you know, like uh, uh, Samurai X. OK, that means you know, I can translate that in my mind or, or uh, Rurouni Kenshin means something. Street Fighter, that means something to me. But 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 things like Digimon say, did you what, what is that? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. What is that? You know, I mean, for w kids, they were like, oh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and <laughs> and plus, I was doing so many shows at the same, you know, almost simultaneously. I remember one time I went to one studio at, oh, I think my call time was probably 11, 10 or 11 in the morning. And they said to me, what are you doing here? I said, I've got, an, I've got a job. What do you mean, what am I doing? Here? I said, dude, you're not scheduled until one o'clock. And I, I, I looked at my thing. I, said, I, I, I got them mixed up. I was supposed to be at another studio. 
15 minutes away. Thankfully, I was, I was, you know, I had enough time and I raced over there. But that's how kind of hectic and confused things got. And, oh, yeah. and uh, yeah, and, and also, you know, it's funny. I don't recall actually auditioning for too many of these roles. Um, they would, I, they'd just say to me, can you come over? say at one o'clock for a couple hours to do some things. I say, sure. And then they tell me what several different voices in, in, in one, one session, several different characters, like Digimon. Digimon, I was, well, why don't you come over and do Digimon? I don't know what that is, but okay. And I walk and I go and they say, okay, we want you to do Gardramon. Okay, they show me the picture and say, well, that guy looks like he's going to talk maybe like this. Say, okay, and you're done with that. Now pick up Piximon or something. Well, he looks like he. So all these different characters and they kind of were a big blur to me, except for ones that I did a lot of. Like I did, there was a show called Eagle Riders. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Uh, I've heard that's of it. how I got my big my start heard of it and and um i played hunter i was the hero and it was a whole season i worked on that for like a year and you know who was on it also w was my co-pilot on the show was brian cranston i don't i don't know what happened to him uh <laughs> i guess it, uh, it kind of disappeared you know it was a yeah. sad actor story you know and yeah maybe maybe Drugs and alcohol and 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 women or something. I don't. Know, but, uh, well, what? Yeah. When I, last, after, after. When, I, when I last heard of him, I heard that he got in trouble for making stuff at an RV or something. Yeah, yeah. I got into drugs. Drugs. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> but he's a really he really is a nice guy in real life, which is something you know you hear a lot about actors. I mean, I didn't really know him i only met him one time we were just shooting the breeze uh, he was finishing he was done with his session and i was just about to start mine and we were kind of hanging out there he was regaling us with stories and things and he's a very nice guy and uh, from my impression of him and he's a he's an awfully good actor that's that's for sure and uh, all of us dubbers uh look up to him and admire him and wish him the best and because we would wish for the same success for ourselves you know and uh, uh he's, he was always a good working actor and he he got luck he you know he got lucky but he worked hard for his luck so good for him and, you know we're losing signal again yeah, I think we're freezing again. Come on back. Oh, there we are. You're back now. Okay. Ah. Zoom can okay. be a pain in the butt. <laughs> it comes and goes. It comes and goes. Uh, well, if I had, I suppose if I were on my computer, I'm on my cell phone, so uh, it, it kind of runs out of uh, space or something after a while, and it has to revamp and reload sorry about that it's okay it's no big deal do you so, have any what do you have you any, talking about uh do you have any particular lines you liked of kenshin's of kenshin's mm -hmm. uh remember any particular line i i i just i, I it's other than the the dog, dog you know that uh so i always enjoyed doing a little after he got hit on the head or something uh but it's funny you did mention uh, my face my beautiful face uh i remember that but that wasn't from the <laughs> catch <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was from the Street Fighter movie. Um, 
I actually uh, got connected with another voice actor because of that movie. Um, I was posting in Richard Epcar's uh, fan group that he has, and the Claypools commented on it and said, oh, yeah, we worked on that movie. <laughs> and they they actually got Skip Stelret to talk to me, and I was like, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Epcar, both Ellen and Richard are friends of mine. And we met through doing the, uh, Richard directed me in a lot of uh, episodes of different shows, and Ellen too. And uh, yeah, Richard's one of my favorite people. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of fun. He's a lot of fun to uh, to work with. Oh, yeah. As he's, is re- he's really nice. I've, I've known him for at least seven years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's got a kind of twisted sense of humor, so I, I think that's why we get along. I noticed that about him and Paul and Robbie Rist. <laughs> and Sorich and Steve Kramer. And yeah, this is like a little uh, group of people that I always enjoyed working with a lot because we have similar sick senses of humor we laughed a, a lot during the, the sessions you know it's probably why i like uh talking to him <laughs> yeah not that i didn't enjoy working with other people you know wendy lee was fun is fun to work with and oh yeah she's pretty nice too i i talked with her off and on she's really nice mm-hmm um, I don't know if you remember, but uh, I was the guy who sent you the Trigun cases uh, last year or the year before. Oh, that was you that sent that was, the Trigun? Yeah, that was me. Did you finally got them? That, that was an ordeal, huh? Oh, well, I think I sent, they got sent to the wrong agency or they lost them for a while and then they got back about three months later. <laughs> Was it was it the 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 big round cases? It was just the uh, ones where um, I I can't explain it. They come in the little DVD box sets. It's just two little paper cases. Oh, I re- yes yes I remember. You know those were in my agent's office for a, a long time, and uh, I guess they just forgot about it. And I I I called them up and I said. Uh, is there some packages waiting for me? And they looked and he said, oh, yeah. And I thought, oh, brother. <laughs> so I went down and got him. And uh, it was hilarious because it was raining the day that I, I, I picked them up. And there's the front portico, porch or portico or whatever of their office is, is it's a kind of a marble something on the street. It was raining raining and as i was leaving their office with your cases i lost my footing it just slipped it was because it was wet, wet and very slippery and i just went whoop boom and i landed in the bushes <laughs> we could just say it was so my almost, fault got, <laughs> it was your fault i almost got killed giving you that, that autograph <laughs> it was worth it, right? <laughs> but it was worth it. Yeah. That was worth it. I think we're losing signal <laughs> again. <laughs> I didn't realize. Yeah, it's coming back. We can okay. hear each other at least. There it is. There it is. Um. Let's see. Do, do you remember any? Uh, do you what did you think of the character that you played from Naruto? You know, I didn't have that much to do with, with in Naruto. I was very lucky that I was that they wanted me to do some characters in that. Um, I just a, the mainly the main character I played was the, the guard, and and. Uh, he didn't have all, he was an ancillary character. I mean, he was just kind of there. There were some other characters that I got to play. Um, 
uh, on that. But that was another example. You know, they called me up. They said, Richard, can you come over to, to do this show? You know, okay. And I, you know, okay, we want you to play this guy. Okay. And it turned into 9,000 episodes, which is including a, a film, which was great. Uh, and uh, I was really lucky. I lucked out, you know, a lot of that is just, you know, knowing the right people, you know, being in the right people, right place at the right time and doing, trying to be good and fun to work with so that they would recommend me to other people. And, you know, I suppose if you really try at that, you won't succeed. You just have to be a fun person. You have to be like a mushroom. You have to be a fun guy. And, uh, uh, you know, oh, yeah. and, uh, hopefully you're talented and you can hit, hit the sink and, and, and make it sound, sound real as possible. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Cause I didn't have that much to do in Naruto. Not really. I didn't have that much of a storyline. You know. It was kind of a, but I'll take it. <laughs> I was shocked when they told me it was over. I mean, I, I was in and out of this that studio for years, literally, I think three years doing the show. And the, the last time I walked in, I had no idea. And the director said, This is the last episode. I said, Yeah, of the season. And she says, No, it's the last episode. Said, oh my no, no. <laughs> I think it was Mary McGlynn that was doing the directing on it, wasn't she? Uh, most, most of them, I think, yeah. I think most of them. I, I, I was a, a friend asked me to ask who the director was, and I couldn't think of who it was. <laughs> yeah, Mary Elizabeth. She's a lot of fun, too. She's moved up to, uh, um, what do you, uh, 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 original animation directing now. So good for her. We're losing, we're catching up. There we are. Yeah, she's moved up to original animation directing. So good for her. She's very good. Not bad. <laughs> well, I think you're pretty good, in my opinion, though. Um, well, thank you. A, I appreciate that. There was a I've lot. Got a, of, I've got a good. I've got a good face for off-camera work. Well, I thought your voice was really fitting for Legato. I mean, so is my personality. So watch out. Okay, I'll remember that not to get you angry, so that way you don't use <clears throat> telekinesis on me. You, you may want to kill yourself by the end of the day. I, you know, possibility, or, or or shove a banana in your boss's nose or something. I, you know, I'll go for that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, was there ever a character you didn't like playing? One that you felt like stressed out your voice any? Um, there wasn't one, well, they kind of, most of the characters I played stress, stressed out the voice because there was a lot of screaming and yelling. I do remember, <clears throat> and I don't even re remember what it was for, um, but I, it, I was screaming um, and the director kept making me do it over and over, the same scream. She said, I want to hear this in your voice. I want to hear that. I want to hear the, the, this. And I, I'm screaming and screaming. And I finally, I turned to her. I said, you know, this is killing me. This is really hurting me. <laughs> you know, I don't know what more I can do for you. You know, get, please give me a break. <laughs> and, and since then, they've, 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 the union has made rules about how much screaming and things on games and, and things like that. And <clears throat> I, when I first started, I was getting introduced to, you know, things. And um, as the new guy, whenever the director would say, I need someone to scream, this guy's on fire. 
I need, you know, who wants to scream for this one? And my hand would shoot up because none of the people who do it for a living want to scream because it hurts your voice. And if you throw your voice out, you can't work sometimes for a week. And, uh, and you can't fake that kind of sc- screaming, you know, it's, it has to sound real. And, uh, uh, and the, and when I first started, I, I, I had a sore throat, a really bad sore throat, but I had to do it anyway. And, uh, yeah, screaming. So, um, uh, the the uh, it reminds me of when the Beatles were, were uh, doing Twist and Shout. They did the whole album, and John had a sore throat, and uh, they made uh, he he had to sing Twist and Shout with a sore throat. So uh, I identified with that, you know. So. The Beatles were a singing group in the 60s. You may have heard of them. They were a big hit, big smash group. For I those think of I've you who were, yeah, well, for those, yeah, for those of you who are really young, they were, they were really big in the 60s and 70s. And I feel really old right now. <laughs> well, you should see how I feel, you know, when I'm talking to, uh, some of my friends about anime and then I'll start talking about the older stuff. Like I'll go back into the eighties stuff even, and I'll start talking like Trigon and it's in the nineties and they're like, what's Trigon? I'm like, I feel like Steve Buscemi when he dresses up as a teenager in that uh, SNL skit and he's like, Hey, fellow kids. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It sneaks up on you. That's what I've learned. It, It just all of a sudden. I, Turn to my girlfriend, and you know we watch something, and we say, "And guest host tonight on SNL is." And I, I look, and I say, "Who is that? Who is that? When, when did I get so out of touch with what's going on? I don't understand." <laughs> you know, that's life, I guess. You know. <laughs> well, that's where you quote the Simpsons and say, "Am I so out of touch?" No, it's the children. It's the children that are wrong. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, was there ever any instances where you didn't get along with another person you were working with? No, I don't think so. Um, not in dubbing. On, yeah. on, on camera, yes. On, in in, in one, one particular instance i it wasn't that i didn't get along with her but she the director was making me crazy um telling me i had got the job it's a long story i won't go into it but i, I had got the job <clears throat> the casting director told me do your do your character this way uh, very stoically everyone else is auditioning very emotionally <clears throat> and do it stoically, do it very internalized. I said, okay, and I, uh, after take, after take, because they couldn't get the camera right. They couldn't get the shot the way the director wanted it to be done. But after every take, she kept saying to me, Richard, you're not giving me what I want. And I was, I'm thinking to myself, I'm doing what you, hired me to do this this is why i got the job and finally she after i don't know 10 takes of you know finally got the camera right she said, okay we're getting everything right richard i don't know what to say to you you cannot be too emotional for this scene now you want me to be emotional you know I didn't appreciate that. I wish she just told me to begin with. I, I didn't, you know, why I got the job, I don't know. But I, I, I haven't had any, <clears throat> um, I, I, I don't recall anyone I didn't enjoy working with. Uh, nah, they're all, they're all fun people. Pretty, you yeah. know. If I could think of anyone, I wouldn't tell you anyway, so. <laughs> 
oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I've got people who have told me, well, I don't like him. It's like, okay. <laughs> really? Really? And then there's Norm nobody. And normally it's in private know. messaging. They'll say it when I talk oh. about another actor or something. And it's like, I don't like him. He's a jerk. I'm like, really? well, that's not very nice. <laughs> really? Has, has my name come up in those conversations? No, never. Really? What have you heard? What have you heard? Actually, when I told, um, I think it was Mary Claypool, I told her that I was going to be interviewing you. I told her last week, she goes, oh, I love that man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, she's a sweet. She's a sweet. And her husband, yeah, they're very nice. Mary and Les are great people. Yeah, yeah, they're they're. I can't think of anyone that I didn't enjoy. I mean, some people are a little odd. There was one where well, he's no longer alive, but he was a nice guy. But he was a little odd, and and but I, it wasn't like I didn't like working with him. I enjoyed her. I, 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 I pretty much like most most people anyway. That I, that I most most actors and directors are are very nice people. They're at the very least, even if they're not nice people, they're charming and they're fun to work with. So yeah, I don't I don't know. I can't think of anybody. I didn't. Now you're going to have me thinking about it. Who doesn't I like? I can't think of anybody. <laughs> I can't think. Oh, you know, I had trouble with Kay Ballard. What am I, yeah. But that was life. You know who Kay Ballard was? She sounds familiar. She was a very, um, um, very talented actress. Did a lot of uh, television and stage and things like that and I, I, I did a, a play with her and uh, she gave me a difficult time for some reason but that's she had a reputation for giving people a difficult time but it's okay because I ended up because of her uh, she gave me and the, the young woman who played the, the, ju the, 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 the ingenue a really hard time I, I was the juvenile lead this was in a dinner theater, and uh, uh, she was the ingenue. I was the juvenile lead. I would, at first, the two of us butted heads. We didn't like each other. And Kay gave the both of us such a hard time that we ended up bonding. And through <laughs> her, this girl, Louisa, we became very close friends. Now we're like brother and sister. We still butt heads, but we're like brother and sister. And it was because of Louisa that, that I met Steve Kramer. and. Melora Hart and Melora and Steve are the reason I got into uh, uh, dubbing and anime and, and all of it, voice, everything. So I could say, yeah, I didn't like Kay Ballard because she gave me such a hard time. But if I hadn't met her, I'd be working in a supermarket instead <laughs> of making a living as an actor. You know, So I have to thank her. You know, for giving me such a hard time. So thank you, Kay. Rest in peace. <laughs> well, anyway, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Well, it's been a pressure. I mean, a pleasure. The and, same uh, thing. Yeah. It was nice to meet you. Nice to talk to you. And uh, good luck in your new job. You know, take the promotion. Make the money. <laughs> All right. And Thanks a lot, man. Thank you.